Thank you, Pastor Jason. Thank you, worship team. If you have your Bibles, I want to invite you to turn with me to Psalm 46. Psalm 46. I want to share a word with the Lord with you tonight. Psalm 46, very quickly while you're turning there, just want to let you know this weekend we will resume a regular worship schedule. So we will be meeting 530 on Saturday evening for worship and then Sunday morning, 830 10 o'clock and 11.30, our regular services. And we hope to see you this weekend for a great start to the new year. Psalm 46, reading in verse 1. God is for us a refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains shake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy place where the most high dwells. God is within her. She shall not be moved. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms shake. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The captain of the armies of heaven is with us. The God of Jacob is for us a fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The captain of the armies of heaven is with us. The God of Jacob is for us a fortress. Harvest time, I have a word from the Lord for you. Get ready to experience the river of God in 2016. Get ready to experience the refreshing of his presence. Get ready to experience the soul satisfaction of his presence. Get ready to experience the security of his presence and the hope of his presence. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready for another move of the Holy Spirit at Harvest Time Church. Get ready for a fresh outpouring. Get ready for a renewal because God is about to release the river of his presence in our midst beginning right here tonight with this New Year's Eve service. I have three prophetic promises and one instruction that I want to share with you quickly from the Lord tonight. And then we're going to gather together at this altar in his presence. Three prophetic promises And one instruction. The first promise is this. In 2016, we're going to experience God's inner peace no matter what. You know, as we stand on the threshold of a new year, I think that there's a mixture of both anticipation and also maybe a little anxiety. Personally, we are full of hope. But we have to admit that we live tonight in a world that is full of uncertainty. Psalm 46 addresses the issue of uncertainty. We don't know what nature is going to do in 2016, and we don't know what the nations are going to do. Verse 3 says that the nations might roar and shake. Verse 6 says that nature and the nations might roar and shake. It's the same exact Hebrew words in both those verses. Both, both nature and the nations, they might roar and shake. As we come into 2016, we don't have any guarantees from this world. We don't know what ISIS is going to do. We don't know what Iran is going to do. Yesterday, we learned that they fired on three of our U.S. warships in the Persian Gulf. 
We don't know what Putin is going to do. We don't know what Syria is going to do. We don't know what China is going to do. We don't know what Kim Jong-un is going to do. I don't think he knows what he's going to do. We don't know what Washington is going to do. We don't know what Wall Street is going to do. We don't know what the Fed is going to do. We don't know what the weather is going to do. We don't know what the world is going to do, but we do know what our God is going to do. God is going to be every kind of help that we need in 2016, right when we need it. God is our refuge, and God is our strength, an ever-present help in trouble. You know that word refuge in verse 1, it means a defensive shield, a defensive fortification, a bulwark, a rampart, an earthen wall of defense. Psalm 46 happened to be the great reformer Martin Luther's favorite psalm. It was his inspiration for the famous hymn, A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing, a defense never failing. That word strength in verse 1, it means an offensive force, the vanguard, the cavalry, the infantry. God is our refuge and God is our strength, an ever-present help in trouble. God is our defensive help when we need to be defended. God is our offensive help when we need to launch an offense. God is our shield and God is our sword. God is every kind of help that we need right when we need it. In 2016, God is both for us and with us. Psalms is the language of poetry. Any of you who speak more than one language know that translating poetry is perhaps the most difficult thing of all. It's very hard to capture all the nuances. In Hebrew, it says three times in this psalm that God is for us. Verse 1, God is for us, a refuge and strength. Verse 7, the God of Jacob is for us, a fortress. Verse 11, the God of Jacob, again, is for us, a fortress. God is for us, for us, for us. You know, that's great, but the promise doesn't stop there. It's possible to be for someone and yet not be in a position to help them very much. We were all for the people of Paris in November. This is a picture of Paris the night after the terror attacks. Not afraid. I like it. Our hearts went out to them. We prayed for them. We changed our Facebook pictures to the French tricolor to express our solidarity with them. We were for the people of Paris, but we couldn't be very much help to them from across the ocean, could we? That's why Psalm 46 tells us twice that God is not only for us, but he is also with us. The Lord Almighty. That title means Jehovah Sabaoth, the captain of the angelic armies of heaven. He is the one who is with us. Verse 11 again, Jehovah Sabaoth, the captain is with us. So shall we put that all together? Nature may roar and shake in 2016. The nations may roar and shake in 2016. But no matter what the headlines may bring, God will be every kind of help we need just when we need it. God will be our defensive help. God will be our offensive help. Therefore, verse 2, we will not live in fear in 2016. Therefore, verse 5, we will not be shaken. Therefore, verse 10, we will be at peace. Beloved, can I tell you, no matter what the headlines bring in 2016, God is for us, for us, for us, and God is with us, with us. And no matter what your personal headlines might bring in 2016, God is for you, for you, for you, and the captain of the armies of heaven is with you, with you. 
You know what? I think we need to do something tonight because I'm preaching better than you're listening. I, I, I think we need to prophesy over our 2016. Uh, you know what prophesying is? It's just declaring the word of the Lord in your mouth under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I think we need to confess this word from the Lord over our 2016. I want you to stand with me real quickly this evening. And I want to lead you in a confession of faith. And I want to invite you to follow after me. This is straight out of scripture. Let's prophesy over our 2016. Come on, I'll lead you follow. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus I, confess I confess that God will be every kind of help I need. God will be my defensive help. God will be my offensive help. God will be every kind of help I need. Right when I need it. Therefore, I will not live in fear. Therefore, I will not be shaken. Therefore, I will be at peace. God is for me, for me, for me. The captain of heaven's armies is with me, with me. Come on, for me, for me, for me. With me, with me. For me, for me, for me. With me, with me. I receive it in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a praise. You may be seated for a moment more. No laughing. <laughs> Three prophetic promises and one instruction. The first promise is inner peace. The second promise is this. In 2016, we're going to experience the Holy Spirit moving dynamically and powerfully. In the midst of this uncertain world, God has a city. If you're wondering where is this city, you're standing in it. The city is not a where, the city is a who. The city is you. Jesus told us himself, the city is God's people, wherever we're gathered together. And in the midst of God's city, in the midst of God's people, there is a river. The river is not a what, but a who to. The river is the Holy Spirit inside of you. Jesus told us about this river. He said, whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Holy Spirit. I want you to notice a few things about God's river with me. For one thing, God's river travels to every believer in Jesus. The river of Psalm 46 verse 4 recalls the river that watered the Garden of Eden. If you go back to the beginning, you'll find that there was a river that split in four directions. And the Bible says it watered every part of the garden. There was no part of the garden that wasn't watered by the river. And so it is with God's city, God's people. The river of God's presence flows from his holy sanctuary and it splits into streams that touch every believer and keep every believer in Jesus spiritually watered and spiritually alive. Jesus said, whoever believes in me will experience these streams within. Another thing about the river is that it is constantly in motion. Jesus called it streams of living water. That's another way to say moving water. It's water that has a continual flowing source and a constant current. When I was a boy, we played in the Neshaminy Creek that ran behind my house. 
Do I have any fellow Pennsylvanians in the house tonight? Is there anybody else? Oh, yeah, come on. Oh, yeah, they're my friends Terry and Andrea. You'll understand. Only people from Pennsylvania understand. In Pennsylvania, my Iris is a fellow Pennsylvanian, but he kind of went to Louisiana, so he might not know this. In Pennsylvania, a C-R-E-E-K is a crick, all right? It's not a creek, it's a crick. And the exciting thing about the crick was that the current constantly brought new things downstream to us. Tadpoles and guppies and little water snakes and bobbers that had broken off of fishing lines and all kinds of other exciting things that floated. Sometimes we, we would try to build little dams across the creek, but they never held for very long because the current, gentle though it was, would always inevitably push those obstructions out of the way and that water, it would just keep on flowing. And so it is with the river of the Holy Spirit. He is constantly in motion inside of us. He is constantly bringing us new spiritual experiences from God's sanctuary. He's constantly bringing us new discoveries and new gifts and new treasures, new revelations of God in his holy word. Our experience in him is not stagnant. It's constantly changing. It's constantly full of wonder. It's constantly fresh and constantly exciting. You ever watch little boys by the side of a crick? They will play there for hours and hours, captivated by whatever it is that's coming downstream. See, we're not the same week by week. We're not the same month by month or year by year. We keep growing from faith to faith, from strength to strength, from glory to glory. Listen, if you're ending 2015 in the same place you started spiritually, or if you're ending in even a worse place, if you're bored with the things of God, something's wrong. It means that someone has built a little dam in your creek. And God wants to push it out of the way tonight with the gentle current of his spirit so that you can feel the flow of his presence again. Come on, don't you want that for the new year? What does the river of the Holy Spirit do inside of us? Several things. The river of the Holy Spirit brings us soul satisfaction. One day, Jesus met a thirsty woman at a well. Her physical thirst was an outward sign of her dire inward thirst for love and acceptance. She had had a revolving door of broken relationships in her life, and now she was in yet another relationship with no commitment and no security. Jesus told the woman if she would only drink of the water that he gives, the Holy Spirit, she would never, ever be thirsty again. You know, when they were finished with their conversation, inevitably she got a drink from that water source because she left her empty water jar next to the well and she ran to tell everybody she could find about Jesus. The water of the Holy Spirit is soul satisfying. The water of the Holy Spirit, it satisfies our deepest inward needs and longings. It satisfies our need for enduring love. It satisfies our need for affirmation and attention and dignity and companionship. Psalm 46 says the river of God's presence makes us glad. The water of the Holy Spirit brings a certain kind of joyfulness to our human spirit. The Bible says it's like the effect of wine without the letdown at the end. Let me tell you something, beloved. There's only one drink that you need on New Year's Eve, and it's a good drink from the river of God's delight, from the river of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit delights us inwardly. Psalm 36 says that he gives us a drink from the river of his delight. The water of the Holy Spirit inwardly refreshes us when the world has run us dry. I know that some of you would love to find Mr. Wright or Mrs. Wright in 2016. 
We would love that for you. Let's start booking weddings in phase two. I can't wait to do the first one. It's going to be beautiful. I know that some of you who are married are praying that your mister would get right. Or that your missus would get right. We want that for you too. But listen to me tonight. Before you go looking for Mr. Right, or before you try to help your Mr. Get Right, you need to drink yourself from the river of God's delight. You need that soul-satisfying water of the Holy Spirit so that you're operating in 2016 from a place of wholeness rather than from a place of need. What does the river of the Holy Spirit bring us? The river of the Holy Spirit brings us inner security. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. You will not be shaken. You will not be anxious. You will not be sleepless in Seattle or in Scarsdale or in Stanford. He will not make bad decisions out of panic. You will not make compromises out of fear. What does the river of the Holy Spirit bring us? The river of the Holy Spirit brings us hope and practical help. God will help her early in the morning. Psalm 65 verse 9 says that the river of God brings us abundant physical provision. You visit the, the earth and you water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is fully full of water and you make grain grow. Isaiah 41 verse 18 says that God's river brings help to the poor. Isaiah 66 verse 12 says God's river brings to us prosperity and the wealth of the nations. Come on, I'm claiming that for phase two in 2016. We need a little wealth of the nations to help us finish our building. Proverbs 18 verse 4 says that God's river brings us wisdom. Amos 3.25 says God's river brings us righteousness. Isaiah 48 verse 18 says God's river brings us peace. In contrast to the world's raging seas, God's streams are gentle and calm. You lead me beside quiet waters. Revelation 22 verse 2 says that God's river brings the fruit of healing. John 4 verse 14 says God's river brings us eternal life. Isaiah 33 21, this is my favorite, I saved it for last, says that God's river forms an impenetrable barrier against our enemy. Jerusalem will be a quiet home. There the majestic Lord will be for us a place of broad rivers and streams into which no troop transports may travel nor warships approach. Doesn't that want to make you take a drink tonight from the river of God's presence? Jesus said all you have to do is come to these waters. Come if you're thirsty. Come if you're tired. Come if you've carried heavy burdens. Come. And I'll give you rest for your soul. Three prophetic promises and one instruction. Inner peace. The moving of the Holy Spirit. The third promise is this. In 2016, we're going to experience God's miraculous help morning by morning. God will help her when the morning dawns. Hard to know exactly when. In Israel's history, Psalm 46 was written, but there were numerous times when God's people were besieged by enemies and God delivered them when the dawn came. There was that morning in Egypt when the sun rose and God's people were set free from slavery and they were sent on their way with all the riches of Egypt. God will help them when the morning dawns. There was that morning in the wilderness of Tekoa when the sun rose and a song rang out from the worship team. The Lord delights in showing mercy. The angelic armies of heaven attacked the armies of three kings and not one enemy soldier escaped alive. God will help them when the morning dawns. There was that morning in the wilderness of Edom when the sun rose and it reflected red light off of ditches that God had miraculously filled with water at the time of the morning sacrifice. 
In one moment, God watered the armies of Israel and Judah in the desert, and he lured the Moabites into a trap. God will help them when the morning dawns. There was that morning in Samaria when the sun rose and four lepers brought the news outside the gate that the Syrian army had run away in the middle of the night and left everything behind because they heard the sounds of horses and chariots and a mighty army. God will help them when the morning dawns. There was that morning in Jerusalem when the sun rose and King Hezekiah found the corpses of 185,000 Assyrian soldiers struck down in the night by the angel of the Lord himself. God will help them when the morning dawns. And then there was another morning in Jerusalem when the sun rose and two men in shining clothes stood inside an empty tomb and said, why do you seek the living among the dead? Jesus is not here. He is risen just as he said. God will help them when the morning dawns. Beloved, here's how we're going to live in 2016. We're going to awaken every new morning expecting to be the recipients of miraculous help. We're going to awaken expecting to be delivered from oppressive situations, oppressive people, and oppressive places. We're going to awaken expecting to be the recipients of divine provision. We're going to awaken expecting to be free from the enemy's threats. Listen, when we go to bed each night, let's confess, God will help me when the morning dawns. Beloved, listen to me. Someone, you hear this. You haven't been able to sleep. Listen to me tonight. I prophesy to you. You are going to sleep in heavenly peace in 2016. Your mind is going to be at peace. Your heart is going to be at peace. Your emotions are going to be at peace. Your physical body is going to be at peace. See, while you're sleeping in 2016, angel armies are going to be on the move on the earth. While you're sleeping, chariot wheels are going to be turning and hooves are going to be pounding and thousands of feet are going to be marching and the sound of God's army is going to scare the liver out of your enemy. While you're sleeping in 2016, men in shining garments are going to be on assignment on your behalf. While you're sleeping, the angel of the Lord himself is going to be fighting your battles. While you're sleeping in 2016, angel armies are going to be spoiling your enemies and preparing to hand the wealth of the nations over to you when the morning dawns. When we awaken in the morning, let's confess God will help me today. You know what? It's New Year's Eve. Only a couple hours left. And and that means that tomorrow morning, it's the first morning of the new year. So we need to make our confession tonight. Now, I don't know where you're going to be in an hour or two, but you're here right now. So why don't we just make our first confession for the new year tonight? God is going to help me when the morning dawns. Come on. I want you to say that with me. God is going to help me when the morning dawns. Come on. God is going to help me when the morning dawns. One more time. God is going to help me when the morning dawns. Come on, give him praise, would you? You know what? Our friends from Stanford are here this evening. God bless you, Stanford. We're glad to see you. It's always more joyful when you're in the house. Two years ago, it became evident to us that we needed to move out of the majestic theater, the The theater had served our purposes well, but we were running into scheduling conflicts. And I was up there preaching one day a brilliant sermon on the glories of heaven. And the movie trailer started behind me while while I was preaching. And so I saw people running to and fro. and, And finally it went off, so I finished my sermon. And when we got in the car, my son said to me, Dad, I can't believe how calm you were through that whole thing. And Denise said, that's because your dad didn't know that the pictures were still going on the screen behind him, even though they managed to cut the sound. It it was evident to us that we needed to move out of the Majestic. And I kept saying to Pastor Charles, Pastor Charles, we have to call uh, across the street. We have to call the palace. We we have to call the palace. And the Stanford crew decided, being the spiritual people that they are, they decided to fast and pray and see what God would do. 
You know, we rent the palace on Good Friday evening. It costs us about $20,000 to do one night in the palace theater. We were paying $500 a Sunday at the Majestic across the street. So we were thinking we have to call the, the palace, but how on earth we can't pay, you know, $10,000, $20,000 a week? And guess what? On the first business day of the new year last year, the palace called us. And they said, we don't suppose that perhaps you'd like to bring your services across the street from the Majestic to the palace. And we said, mm -hmm. we'll think about it. <laughs> and then we went up to meet with them and negotiate the price, knowing that we pay $20,000 for one night on Good Friday evening. And we said, well, you know, we very limited on our budget. And they said, what are you paying across the street? And we said, we're paying $500 a week. And they said, we'll let you come for $500 a week. God will help them when the morning dawns. Three prophetic promises and one instruction. Inner peace, moving of the Holy Spirit, miraculous help. Now for the instruction. Worship team, come help me finish if you would. In 2016, make more time to be still and experience God. Psalm 46 tells us that we don't know what the world will do. But it tells us all the wonderful things that God will surely do. And then it tells us just one thing to do. There is one imperative in this psalm. There is one command, one instruction from the Lord. And it is simply this, be still. Be still and experience God. Be still in prayer. Be still in the word. Be still in meditation on the word. You know what that means? It means memorizing scripture. Be still in worship. Sing and pray in the spirit. Be still in fellowship with other believers. Beloved, can I tell you, I hope you still love me. There's just way too much activity in our lives and not enough still. There's too much work and not enough still. There's too much soccer practice and swimming and tennis and dance classes and music lessons and not enough still. There's too much gym and not enough still. I hope my trainer Dom isn't here tonight. He'll break me in half for saying that. There's too much fussing over the house and not enough still. Too many weekend excursions and not enough still. Too much recreation, too much entertainment, too much shopping, too much television, too much social media, and not enough still. I was moved by this photo that I came across the other day. This is a congregation in the Philippines. And even though their church was flooded out, they came to worship anyway. I have to confess my heart hurt a little bit when I saw this picture because I know that attendance is going to be low this weekend at harvest time for no other reason than it's a long holiday weekend and so some believers consider themselves entitled to a break from worship. On the other side of the world, people will walk through a flood and they will stand in ankle deep water because they can't bear not to worship. Beloved, let's be like them. Come on, in 2016, let's be like them. Let's be so hungry to worship that come hell or high water, we can't bear not to worship. Perhaps on this New Year's Eve, God would have you evaluate your priorities going into 2016. Is there enough still in your life? God says, here's what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to be every kind of help you need in 2016. I'm going to be your defensive help. I'm going to be your offensive help. I'm going to be every kind of help you need right when you need it. No matter what the headlines bring, I am for you, for you, for you, and I'm with you, with you. I'm going to satisfy your soul with the river of my presence and all the good things that it brings downstream. I'm going to quiet your heart and your mind. I'm going to miraculously help you morning by morning. That's what I'm going to do. Now here's all I ask you to do. Just be still and receive it. God is for us a defensive shield and an offensive force. Every kind of help we need right when we need it. Therefore, we will not live in fear. Though nature or the nations roar and shake, there is a river of the Holy Spirit whose streams bring joy to the people of God. God is in our midst. We will not be shaken. God will help us when the morning dawns. The captain of the angelic armies of heaven is with us. God is for us a fortress. Be still. The captain of the angelic armies is with us. God is for us a fortress. Harvest time, church. Receive the word of the Lord. Would you stand and give a great big praise to Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Oh, come on, don't give him a little wimpy praise. Jesus, a great big praise in this place tonight. Thank you.